Have you ever seen an adorable bento lunchbox and thought to yourself, if only? Um, you mean, if only I had time, if only I had patience, <laughs> or if only I had a PhD in crafting? Um, yes, all of the above. Listen, not anymore. Our friends at Fancy Sprinkles are making it fun and easy to pack lunch boxes this year with their back to school line of sprinkles, easy candy, prism powder, and get this, edible sprinkle stickers. Ah! Their back to school sprinkles might be their most adorable yet with numbers and letters for little ones and cool glittery tones for teens. And yes, we 100% endorse sprinkles on sandwiches. From sun butter and jelly to cream cheese and jam, we promise that adding sprinkles guarantees lunch satisfaction. We're also dusting fresh fruit with prison powder and drizzling easy candy onto energy bites, cut banana pieces, pretzels, and cookies. You just pop your easy candy bag in the microwave, snip the tip of the bag, and drizzle or dunk whatever you want into the vanilla-flavored melted candy, no crazy cleanup required. But the best part of all are the new Fancy Sprinkles edible sprinkle stickers. These stick to anything that's just slightly moist, from apples to the top of your sandwich, and make it, well, you know, more fancy. Just peel stick and wait for your parent of the year award because your kid will definitely have the coolest lunch in the class. We know that packing lunches day after day can feel like a drag, but now thanks to fancy sprinkles, you can pack a little bit more fun and a lot more joy without any extra work. To check out the new line of back to school products from fancy sprinkles, head to fancy sprinkles.com slash D I J F Y and use the code D I J F Y to get 20% off your first order. That's fancysprinkles.com slash D-I-J-F-Y, short for Didn't I Just Feed You. I think it's more helpful to think about flavor combinations and just like making sure that you're capturing fatty, fresh, spicy, maybe something tart. You want balance of flavor and texture, right? In everything you do. Silky, crunchy, dense, creamy. Think about those textures and those tastes and just varying them up. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You? A podcast about feeding kids. Hey, I'm Stacy. And I'm Megan. Hey, before we get into this week's episode, don't forget to subscribe right where we're, li- right where we're listening. We're listening. You're listening. <laughs> And you know that we're used to telling you to rate and review, which you should do. But today, we're also going to encourage you to check out our listeners group. We offer a free space to all listeners. And and if you become a supporting member this week, you're eligible to enter for a chance to win our huge, like seriously, legitimately huge back to school giveaway valued at over $600. You can join by visiting our site, didn'tijustfeedyou.com. And remember that the giveaway is for supporting members only. And it's happening this week. Yeah, like Um, now. Like you guys have to like listen to this right when it publishes. Because you do that, right? That's what you guys do. (laughs) You wait for this and you're like, oh, right away. And join, 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 join. Yeah. I want to tease and be like, (laughs) it's everything you need for a really great back to school season of like feeding your family. It is. I what I love about it is that everything you need and also things that make it fun. Because we know that like sometimes the transition from summer to getting into a school routine can feel a little tiny bit joyless. <laughs> is that overstating it? <laughs> Jarring? I don't uh, know. Like going from feeling relaxed to not relaxed. I don't know. Cause actually is summer all that relaxing? The point is there's fun stuff in there. That's the point. Uh, let's talk about that thing. Of like, is summer relaxing is back to school jarring? I feel like I kind of actually love back to school and maybe it's because I know my kids are going to be out of the house. Yes. <laughs> listen, the listen, and I'm, I'm so psyched. ready for a routine after this summer of like just changes, changes and trying to get settled. So I'm with you. Yeah. I still have a whole month though before my kids go back to school. I know you do. We only have about 10 days once this, this Why, year. Yeah, yeah. I, know. I mean, we're like early September. So that's okay. I mean, the thing that I just decided this summer is <laughs> I decided to be okay with whatever it was. Like I just decided 
I have loved watching your fun mom summer moments. And a lot of it has to do with the age of my kids. So this is, right. but like in some moments I'm fun mom in some moments I'm not like, in, I used to just like have visions and want like the summer to be a certain way. And like, I want my kids to go like love sleepaway camp and they hate it. Like want my kids to do that. Like, <laughs> Yes. I make a summer bucket list and everyone's like, no, that's lame. Yeah. That's what happened in my family. Okay. So this year, like whatever it was, I was like, I'm just deciding to be happy. And I think it has a lot to do with how hard the last year and a half was. Yes. You know, like I'm going to go with the flow and Megan, you know, that going with the flow is not always my natural state. (laughs) Neither of ours. No. (laughs) So it's been working. So I'm super excited for when the kids go back to school. I cannot lie, but it is what it is. I will say though, in general, I do think that regardless of however you experience summer versus back to school and this and that, there is a shift in the cadence of our lives. 100%. It is a transition season, right? And I don't think in general, that we, even didn't I just feed you, but also like we, as in the the food media in general, talk enough about the challenges of feeding ourselves and feeding our families in tradition. So yes, there's like the very big obvious ones that people cater to, like you have a new baby, like how are you going to stock your freezer? Or like, how are you going to feed your friend after they add to their family? But moving is a huge one where you have to eat like we had people in Boise like bring us food or feed us as we were trying to pack things up, but less so on the other end. And like, what mm-hmm. do you do there? Um, and back to school, I think, especially after like having a couple of wonky back to school seasons with COVID stuff going on, like this will maybe be the most quote unquote normal back to school season totally. where maybe you can pack lunch in the way that you normally would and activities are resuming and it's going to be like, busy as hell. So we think you should feed your family sandwiches. Yeah. I think this is great. That's like such a beautiful, you know, segue because I really feel strongly about this. I'm excited about this episode. I I feel like sandwiches are really one of the keys (laughs) to making your back to school transition easier. First of all, A lot of us, not everybody, but a lot of us have to pack sandwiches. Yes. Right? And it's so easy for them to get boring. I know there are a lot of kids who don't love sandwiches, so it's not like always what you pack, but some people really rely on sandwiches heavily. I'm raising my hand for school lunches. And so we're going to talk a lot about that. And then also, though, I think that especially in the back to school season, when we just have to like get on tracks to keep organized, sandwiches become tracked as a lunch food. Yeah. And actually, they make a fantastic dinner food. They can be DIY. They can be build your own, which kids love. They can be just throw a bunch of stuff out on the counter and everyone can kind of make it themselves. If you have older kids like me, there's a lot of ways that you can approach sandwiches that make dinner easier and really fast and low cooking a lot of the times too. Not always, but I'll just add picky eaters. Like if you have Mm -hmm. everyone eats a little bit differently in your family and for like when back to school, soccer, baseball, all that stuff starts back up and you need to eat in shifts, sandwiches can really be a lifesaver for that. Totally. Totally. So I do think that we want to be clear that, you know, there are entire podcasts devoted to sandwiches. (laughs) There are? Wait, there I want to know now. Mm-hmm, there are. I'll put a link to the one okay. that I'm thinking about. Okay, so there can be entire podcasts. There are entire podcasts devoted to sandwiches. And cookbooks and blogs. And cookbooks and blogs, right. And you can get really nerdy about it, like textures and layers and how you cut it. So, Megan, I here's what I think. <laughs> I think we can just like touch on some elements of like how to think about making a good sandwich, but we're not going to get into that. This is not like a comprehensive all about sandwiches. This is very specific to back to school season. So we can kind of touch on sandwich making broadly and then dig into lunchbox sandwiches and then dinner sandwiches that we think are easy. Cause I think that's, what's going to be useful right now. That's my hunch. Right. I agree. Okay. can't wait for this episode because I have to tell you, sandwiches are the things I pack the least oh. lunches, but lean on the most for like quick 
dinners. That's so funny. I'm the complete reverse. Yeah. And actually got in the past when I was like really in a groove and Oliver and Isaac were a little bit younger, I would pack like really effing good sandwiches. Like I was proud of my <laughs> sandwiches. But then I very, very, very rarely make them at dinner time. Hmm. Do you think that's more because your boys, you know that they will eat sandwiches versus the like bready carby part of sandwiches are hard for you yes, to eat at totally totally yeah I think that's it although I'll make pasta for myself like you're referring to the fact that I I say I eat low carb in reality I don't eat particularly low carb but I do kind of that's a touchstone for me in my diet because of how carbs impact my energy because of PCOS yeah. so when I do eat carbs though it would be at night because then I get yes, to go to sleep you've shared that before <laughs> you're like I don't really have I'll get carbs sleepy at breakfast and, and lunch but like at dinner time I am going to go to bed anyway. Yeah. So like, what does it matter yeah. for my but energy I, levels? Yeah. But still like also serving bread as part of dinner is not something that I like do very often. Like when I serve bread at dinner, like if I get a crusty loaf or I make garlic bread, they, everybody's like, oh yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. I Bread is like paramount to my one sort of like picky selective eater right now. Like everything out, like that is the one thing bread and like apple slices put on the table. If nothing else, that's what Elle is going to eat at dinner time. Yeah, I totally get it. Also for me, Oliver will only eat the bread. And yeah. the thing is, he's not picky. It's not like I need to put it there. He just loves the, it. He's he like, loves it the bread. so much. And then he <laughs> won't eat dinner. I have to put like the kibosh on it. I'm like, here's your piece of bread. Now eat the rest of your dinner, which I know you like, and I know you will eat. And then you can eat as much bread as possible. Which, yeah. I mean, the kid a can, lot. like, go through a loaf. <laughs> Not to get us off track or anything, but recently we went to the grocery store and I told Ella, like, you can have any treat. Because it was, like, the middle of the afternoon and I needed a recipe testing ingredient. And they did not want to go with me. I was like, I'm not doing grocery order for like the three items that I need. Yeah. Like, you guys can pick out any treat. Emmett picked out a bag of like sour patch ropes yeah. things, which were so good. And <laughs> Ella's treat that she picked out anything in the store. She could have ice cream. She could have like had lobster, though she would never. She picked out a baguette and she ate the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then was still hungry for dinner. I have to tell you, like, that's, that's a girl after my own. <laughs> yes. I was like, girl, that yes. is, that's the move. If you know what you want. And I, it was like still warm from the oh, bakery. Yum. It was a great day. Um, <laughs> All right. Apparently I need to be making more baguette sandwiches for both lunch and dinner. So let's talk about lunch sandwiches because I don't pack them very often. My kids tend to like pull them apart apart and just like eat the meat and cheese and like not really want the bread unless it and then they'll like not being allowed to have peanut butter at school makes it a little bit harder to they love a peanut butter and jelly but like at home for a little while Ella would eat cream cheese and jelly sandwiches on sort of like wheat bread and sometimes we would make that sort of fairy bread like by putting sprinkles on the edges or the outside and making it a little bit fun I think those are the only like sandwiches that I've okay in so, my time as a school lunch packer. So let's talk about the elements of a sandwich first, because I think this will be relevant to lunch sandwiches and dinner sandwiches. And I think it'll also help us distinguish like what do you need on hand to make a great school lunch sandwich versus a great dinner sandwich. So okay. there are lots of different like theories about this. There's like the four point sandwich and the five element sandwich, but it's the bread is very important. And there's so many like you, I think for school lunch, it's really important to think about bread expansively. So we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. You're blowing my mind already. You're like the four points of sandwiches. And four points five, of sandwiches. Okay. Five step. Okay. The spread. Okay. Another okay. really important one that I think people think creatively about spreads when they're thinking dinner sandwiches more than when they're thinking school lunch sandwiches. And we should talk about that too. Because I think that's key to making a school lunch sandwich taste really good. And using up leftovers. So we'll talk about that. Then there's the filling. Obviously, that's like your protein, your meat, your cheese, your crunch. 
really important. Okay. Okay. So we can lettuce, potato chips, pickled vegetables. I don't know. You know, something crunchy is makes a really great sandwich. Less important for the lunchbox, I think, okay. but that's important for dinner. And then that's four, right? So the fifth that most people talk about is like, Je ne sais quoi, like that something yes. extra, a right? Something special. The something special, which I actually think that's like for the average home cook, that's not that helpful. I think it's more helpful to think about flavor combinations and just like making sure that you're capturing like fatty, fresh, spicy, maybe something tart, you know, like those basic elements. And we talk about this even in like a lot of episodes about cooking, like you want balance of flavor and texture, right? In everything you do, silky, crunchy, dense, creamy, you know, like think about those textures and those tastes and just varying them up. So much to unpack here. I feel like it would be really easy to take sort of a classic sandwich Mm -hmm. and talk through why those rules work and how they apply there. Yeah. Like thinking about a muffalata. Yeah. Right? Like you have this bread that is like high density. It's high. It's very chewy. So yes. it folds up to being pressed or prepped ahead. Right? So you're getting like a chewy element there to start and some crunchy texture. There's creamy cheese. Mm-hmm. There's that spice of the salami. Yeah. And also the fat of the salami. Yeah. And all the different kinds of meat. And actually the combinations of the meat have different levels of fat and spice and flavor. Yes. Totally. Yes. And then you get that, like, is it like an olive salad yes. that goes on it? That is also a little bit of the element of crunch, but is bringing that fat and that like something special to it. Yes. And that silky, cause it's in olive oil. So you get a little yes. bit of silkiness. Olive oil, And there's usually like vinegar. Mm-hmm. So you're getting all the balances of flavor. And then you're also hitting all those texture notes, chewy, creamy, crunchy, yep. all there. It's a beautiful, it's a near perfect sandwich, honestly, in my opinion. I love it them. It kind of really is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But again, that's not really like a rule for lunch boxes. That is like the those those are great guiding yes. principles for sandwiches, whether they're for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, right? Right. So I do think though for lunch box, the place to focus is really the breads and the spreads. And then thinking about like you don't have to hit all of those check texture and flavor marks. That's a little much for a lunch box. But like hitting more of them than you might normally think about. So a turkey sandwich with mayo. Well, what if we put some pesto in the mayo or a little bit of that leftover tomato sauce that you just had this much, you know, a tiny bit left of that you can't really do anything else with or red pepper sauce or even just a squirt of sriracha or just mix Dijon and mayo. And then why don't we put, you know, mild pepperoncino if your kid likes pickled stuff or you know, sandwich slices of pickles, you know, grillos, pickles on sandwiches, like Oliver's obsessed. And that gives you, especially those pickles in particular, because they're fresh packed and they're so delicious. That also gives you a little tang and a beautiful crunch, you know, so you're taking turkey or turkey and cheese. And really all we did was add a little something to the mayo and add like pickles. And all of a sudden it really feels like a different, much more interesting and exciting sandwich. Do you know what I love about the concept of breads and spreads only is that there are also kids who they need a little comfort and security Mm -hmm. at lunch. And it kind of like gives you these parameters of like, okay, I'm going to keep the turkey and the cheddar cheese very basic, but I'm going to experiment a little bit with like the texture of the bread or doing hummus instead of mayo or mustard on it. Um, So it creates like a sense of playfulness, but also still that like comfort that some kids really need, especially if they're like kindergarten or first grade and they're just like getting back, back into school is a big emotional transition for them too. Yes, absolutely. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you're talking about the smaller kids, the older kids, you know, Oliver, even just at 11, two slices of whole wheat with some, you know, three slices of turkey and a slice of cheese or two slices of cheese. Like that's not very that doesn't hit for him it does <laughs> not hit for him you know what i mean so yes. then like how do you bulk it up how do you make it more interesting using With- the sandwich itself not just also the, all the other stuff because also he's now too old for like a huge lunchbox that has five components where i can pack all these cute little things like he's he wants- too old is he too cool for that 
he needs like the brown paper bag with like some take and toss. I mean, there. listen, I'm not going to go into it, but he is such a cutie, smushy kid. Like he's a little too <laughs> cool, but he's kind of not cool. Is not <laughs> cool is not his thing. It's so cute. Isaac, on the other hand, definitely too cool. Like, don't play. He cares. Yeah. He Oliver needs like, like a grown up sandwich. Yeah. yeah. Oliver really just is like, I just want to feel full, you know? Like, <laughs> he's just going through life, wanting a good time and wanting to feel full in pajamas. But that's yes, a different if story. You could. If you, you could, could pajamas cool. Listen, don't yeah, even mention it to him, Megan, because he will try. COVID has made him a guy who literally only wants to wear pajamas all the time for another time. So we should get into specific ideas, but should we also talk about some other things to make sandwiches more interesting to just get out of the rut of the same three rotation of sandwiches? Before we move on from breads and spreads, you had this thought at the beginning, this thought nugget of like, Thinking about the bread oh, yeah. conceptually, like yes. bread doesn't have to be <laughs> sliced bread. <laughs> doesn't all have to be like sandwich bread, right? It doesn't all have to be sandwich bread. Bagels. Okay. Bagels, wraps. pitas, wraps, English muffins. If you have time to prep ahead and there's no expectation that you should, but if you, you know, pizza dough like store-bought yes. pizza dough and just doing quick roll-ups and throwing them in the oven if you have like an extra 20 minutes and that the sound of that doesn't make you want to roll your eyes hard. Also, when you start to think about things like paninis, grilled cheeses, quesadillas, not all kids like something that was hot that has been cooled. My kids do, and I have shared stuff on Instagram. I know that parents are very split on this, but there are a bunch of kids who are totally fine having a quesadilla that's cooled. Those are my kids. Actually, Mine probably too. prefer a completely cooled quesadilla or hot, hot pocket, pizza pocket kind yeah. of style sandwich. Yeah. Grilled cheese even, like they're totally. not in it for the cheese pull. Totally. They just want the cr- little bit like crispy, buttery outside and the cheese yeah. stuck to the bread so it's easy to eat. Yeah, it's almost like it's become a cheese stick inside. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. a different shape. You know what I mean? It's got that same density. Oliver yes. likes it too. He's totally happy with that. Pancakes, waffles. Ooh, okay. You make a big batch on Saturday. You have them left over. You freeze them or put them in the fridge. You know, cream cheese and jelly. I've done a lot on pancakes and waffles. Um, Nutella, sun butter, you know, and jelly or sun butter and fluff. Anything like that goes really great. And it's a total delight for kids. I do want to say, and... I used to think this way too. So this is truly, I'm not judging anyone for this because I'm really talking to my past self (laughs) and like the idea that a sandwich always has to be like protein and like cheese and have some veggies or like, I challenge people to kind of let go of this notion of like, whatever you think a sandwich has to be to be healthy. I think the healthiest thing you can do is make sure that your kid eats lunch and that they have a full belly and that they're sated for their school day. So if putting sprinkles in lunch, sprinkles and fluff is going to get your kid to eat sandwiches because they're tired of everything else or they're picky or whatever the case may be. We're celebrating something with them. Maybe they like accomplished a big test or it's a birthday or it's a fun holiday. And this is one of the reasons that I do love the fancy sprinkles is because they hold up to being inside a sandwich. And they're the that crunchy element to the yes. sandwich as well. And I also just want to say hashtag pack that <laughs> seriously, <laughs> right? Pack it. I don't think either of us, any of us, are packing just a sandwich for lunch. So stop yeah. putting all the pressure yes. on the sandwich to be the complete meal. It can be like the treat or dessert component yes. of the lunch box. Yes. It can be pure fun or it can be like the carbs and the protein yep. and the veggies are all just like, you know, chopped sliced veggies 
in there that was minimal effort on your part. No need to like make a salad or totally cook veggies or anything like that. Totally. I mean, sugar and carb is what part of what kids need. It's important yes. for their diet and it's especially important in moments where they need energy, which they do. <laughs> Even if your kid is like at that age where they're sitting for most of the afternoon, like they will like they need mental energy. It takes a lot to be in school takes a lot to be in school all day. So, you know, hummus and carrot sticks and then a fluff sandwich with sprinkles for some sugar and carb to like get you going. I mean, of course there is such a thing as sugar crash, but I actually looked it up just as a side note, because I am a, this is not sponsored people. I am a fluff aficionado. (laughs) I I want to proselytize for fluff. (laughs) I love it so much. And I, looked it up and spoonful for spoonful, it actually has less sugar than jam. Yes. So like a spoonful of, you know, fluff on a sandwich with like a palm full of sprinkles is not going to cause a major crash, especially if you are really concerned, put it on whole wheat bread and then yeah. also pack hummus and carrots. Done. It's all about the balance and like, are they totally eating just that on an empty, like if they're eating spoonfuls of fluff is a totally different scenario than them <laughs> eating it on a sandwich. Shh, Megan, stop how I talking know. about me. <laughs> <laughs> stop talking about me. Something you said there also reminded me of like roll-ups, which yes. I guess I did do a lot of like tortilla roll-ups which are technically kind of a sandwich when my kids were little, sort of like that lunchbox sushi where you do like a spread and put fruit in the middle and then roll it up and slice it into little pieces, which is actually great for kids who get distracted at lunchtime too, because it's like quick little bites and they can be talking and still like getting a lot of food in and a lot of totally like those carbs and sugar and calories to give them energy for the rest of the day. Yep. What are your feelings on like deconstructed sandwiches or like sandwich kebabs? Build your like all the elements that build your own stuff is in there. You literally read my mind. That was literally where I was going to go next. Because even if your kid doesn't like sandwiches, I think that thinking about sandwiches and how you would build one is still really helpful to packing a lunch because it's not a sandwich. But it's a paradigm for thinking about like what you want to put in there and it uses the same ingredients. So something that I like about thinking in terms of sandwiches is that it helps keep me organized. Even when I haven't made a grocery list, I know that I want to get like two or three different kinds of bread, like tortillas, English muffins, and like hearty rolls or whatever, you know, and then I can kind of think about like, what would I put in the middle of a sandwich? Yeah. And then you just deconstruct it. Part of the checklist, right? Yeah. Like, ooh, I'm going to buy, I'm going to make sure I have cream cheese and hummus because exactly. I can turn that into like six variations on a veggie yeah. sandwich or a um, meaty sandwich, right? And then you can grab like ve- veggies and fill out the rest of it with probably like leftovers. Like yes. you were saying, the idea of like, okay, if you roasted sweet potatoes, then you like, can slice sweet potatoes and put those on a hummus sandwich with some slaw or totally. some pickly that veg. Totally. delicious, and by the way. <laughs> yeah, I would eat that right now. <laughs> that's, like, that's brilliant. Um, and then all of those things that you just like rattled off can also just be packed in a lunchbox. If right. your kid doesn't like sandwiches, you can put a roll on the side and then you can slice sweet potatoes and put it there and, you know, put slaw in a little container go cheese plate style basically yeah. or snack Make plate croutons style. out of those leftover yes. rolls that are going stale or the half eaten baguette and pack sort of like a crouton or crostini exactly sandwich deconstructed sandwich kebabs you mentioned yes Putting something kebabs. on a stick like croutons and hummus that's great that's delicious what's different than like pita chips and hummus Same. except that you're using up stale bread and not having to buy a whole other thing so it saves money it reduces food waste and it's the same thing i'm yes. here for it yes okay are we ready to dive into dinner sandwiches not quite we yet because okay, i want to wow. talk about and i feel like you're gonna be <laughs> i feel like you're gonna be really good at like having thoughts about this i think we should talk about how to pack sandwiches because that's a question that's been asked a lot in our listener group, especially people who want to prep the night ahead. Yes. So let's talk quickly about like, what are the considerations for packing a sandwich? You also have a thing about sandwiches falling apart. 
Oh my gosh, it's my own like <laughs> my own anxiety which no, might be it... different than like lunch packing anxiety. Okay, but let's talk about but it. I do think there's something here, right? Like how you build the sandwich is almost as important as what you put on the yes. sandwich. Because if you're putting slippery ingredients, like I talk about lettuce all the time, <laughs> it's so slippery. If you put it on a burger, your burger's sliding around. Same thing with like sandwiches. So there are a couple of ways you combat that, which is you just put the lettuce in a different position. Like maybe you do your bread and your swipe of hummus and then the lettuce. So the lettuce sticks to the hummus. And then you put something else like the cheese directly in contact with the lettuce too. So it's kind of like secured. Yeah. Or... And you know, I have a thing about lettuce that's been resting on cheese too much. I don't like that oh. because I feel like the moisture, just learning this. the moisture yeah. makes the cheese like having like a, it happens at like airport sandwiches. Yeah. The cheese gets a little bit wet in a way that yes. I really like does not work for me. Okay, can we just cancel lettuce? <laughs> I was I, you, say, know that, you, you know like, that Isaac? Up the lettuce, yes, that's what which, I was going to say. Which is a thing I really like to do. But then I also feel like, well, then I kind of just want it to be like a slaw or something instead. I love uh, shredded more lettuce. More like a pickled, like some sort of pickly salad, like the olive salad on muffalettas. I feel like lettuce on sandwiches and lettuce on burgers is a weird mm-hmm. advertising and food styling. <laughs> like it is there to be green because that catches your eye and it looks pretty, but like doesn't really taste great. Okay, you and Isaac have to go out for sandwiches. Isaac is okay. highly offended by lettuce on sandwiches. Like he thinks Wait, what is what is his beef with it? it? It's the same thing. He just thinks it has no flavor. It slides off. It takes up a room. Lot of time it doesn't. It, he's like, why? It's a waste and it's in my way. It's it's a block. <laughs> yes. It's gonna cause my sandwich to fall apart. I'm gonna have to eat it more slowly, and I don't want to do yeah, that. He's he's there with you. I like shredded lettuce, and I was gonna say what I think shredded lettuce is good for is when you want a vinaigrette element or olive oil element. So I really like vinaigrette and Dijon mustard both, but vinaigrette or anything wet, even sometimes olive oil, depending on the bread you use can make your bread soggy. So I like to toss the shredded lettuce with a little bit of the vinaigrette or oil instead. And then I'll put, it depends on the bread I'm using. I'll put it like right after like bread, swipe the mustard, then the lettuce, or I might even put it in between the meat because the meat has more friction, but that does get a little bit dicey. I I have to admit, if you have a thing about slippage, it still might not work for you. But I think you're bringing up this point of friction, like, and this is going to transition us a little bit into dinner sandwiches where I think this is more important. But thinking about friction is actually important. Like, how you, yeah. right? How you cut it and where you place things. But back to lunch boxes really quickly. I do think lightly toasting the bread helps. Again, and this is a, like the, the clear point of putting a spread up against your bread yes. or toasting it is you're, you want to create a kind of moisture barrier. So you don't yeah. end up with super soggy bread. I think that's, that's like bread. the big takeaway. And then yeah. even think about it for like peanut butter and jelly, instead of putting all the peanut butter on one slice of bread, split the amount of peanut butter you want to use between the two and put the jelly in the middle. It does get a little bit slippery, but the jelly then won't soak into the sandwich bread, which yeah. I think is important. I hate soggy bread, but again, also rolls, heartier bread, focaccia, like there's lots of other breads that you can be using that where make you have to give less consideration yes. to those things. Like yes. if you're doing a PB and J roll up way easier. I mean, that stuff's basically mixed all together anyway. Totally. Perfect on a tortilla. Yes. Okay. I just have to speak to your shredded lettuce. <laughs> We're not going to move on. Okay. Go ahead. We're not. Well, this is kind of like a transition, right? Like we do need to get into talking to dinner sandwiches. And one of my favorite dinner sandwiches is this like Italian site, sort mm, of like yeah. very traditional sub thing. My dad's family, like my dad and his brothers and sisters grew up in New Jersey. Yeah. And for some reason, like Jersey sandwich pride. boxer is like, it's like a very big thing. <laughs> yes, it so is. So when I was a little kid, I did not like mayonnaise and mustard. And my dad, it was like for shame. It was like shame on our family that I did not want to have like my sub sandwich with my turkey and Genoa salami and provolone with anything like moist on it. (laughs) (laughs) 
the way I like got around that uh, was to do oil and vinegar on my shredded lettuce and tomato. Yeah. And one of the tricks I learned to create that friction and like make space for those salady things was to like kind of peel the interior part of the top, yes. lo- top slice of bread or top Kobe scoop roll. It. Scoop it out. Mm-hmm. And then it makes more room and actually creates sort of like a little snuggly nook for all yes. the sandwich <laughs> filling stuff to go into. Yes. So that's it. I just, as when, uh, when you were talking about the shredded les- lettuce and dressing it with Dijon and stuff, I was like having weird flashbacks so to like funny. sandwich shops in Vermont with my dad during the summer and him being like, you have to. You're just going to eat a dry ass sandwich? I have like, two things to say kind to of, you. Yeah. One is that Oliver can be that way too. Not always. It's not a rule for him, but he will eat turkey on bread. And I literally have said, you're going to eat a dry ass sandwich? Like I have probably said those exact <laughs> words. <laughs> it's a little odd to me, but whatever. And I'm so glad you brought up scooping. It's funny. You know, when you do things automatically, yes. you don't like think to bring it to the forefront and say it. So because I live in the land of bagels, like scooping is a totally like normal course of action to me. Like that's how I'll order my bagel from the bagel shop. Again, because I'm eating it in the morning and carbs and I just want it to be a little lighter. So it's like my normal order is like everything bagel scooped out with vegetable cream cheese. Scooping is a genius thing because also that doughy part is the part that gets soggy. Once you're putting lettuce in a scooped out hoagie roll, for example, the moist lettuce is going up against basically the crust. Yeah. So there's not a lot of opportunity for sog, which- So do you not feel like that redeems the scoop? I don't want to always associate, you know, if you listen to like our weight loss episode, and I think we're going to do a mini update in our listeners group about it, that like sometimes I feel conflicted because I feel like the scoop is considered like so diet country. Oh, yeah. But it actually has like very culinary purposeful clout to it. Like totally out makes more room for you to have the like veggie cream totally, or have more salami or- that olive salad. Also, just, well, I'll keep talking about the muffalata the whole yeah, time. Yeah. So. Also, <laughs> also, it's about ratios. Yeah. And for some people, like sometimes I want a dense bagel, but you know what the bagels are like in New York City. Sometimes it's like a lot. And then they put- It's a little bit like, are you serious? Yes, totally. <laughs> so yes. it's about the ratio of, you know, like scooping a little bit, not a full scoop, to be honest, like a mini scoop. <laughs> And the perfect schmear of cream cheese for me actually makes the bagel that I want. Yeah. Like carbs be damned, like having nothing to do with that. So yes is the answer. Yes. Okay. I think we should take a quick break to hear from this week's sponsors. And then let's talk about dinner sandwiches. Megan, it's no secret that I'm a maximalist who loves Lux clothing and home goods. Mm-hmm. It's also no secret that I'm a minimalist who also loves investing in a handful of small Lux things that will last and service for a long time, especially for my home. And we both love a good deal, which is here, how we here. both become obsessed with OneQuince.com, a one-stop shop for curated luxury goods shipped direct from the world's best specialist factories. Quince partners with factories that produce well-known luxury brands and that demonstrate a commitment to high production standards, fair wages, safety, and sustainability. They also focus on essential products with low design costs. Think cashmere cruise, super soft fleece pants, and the down comforters, and hotel quality sheets that I'm stocking up on for the new house. And while I stocked up on silk camis and PJs for summer, now I'm doing some back-to-school shopping for me. A new denim shirt, everyday gold hoops, and a cute crossbody bag. Staples I'm going to wear on repeat all fall, shipped directly from the factory. No middle person, no upcharge. Altogether, that's how Quince is able to keep prices up to 50 to 80% lower than other brands. Real simple, in style, fast company, Refinery29, and Fortune all agree with us. Quince is a game changer. Take advantage of a brand new offer just for our listeners. Get 10% off any purchase of $100 or more with the code FEED10. There's always free shipping and 365 day returns. Just go to onequince.com slash D-I-J-F-Y. That's O-N-E-Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash D-I-J-F-Y. Short for Didn't I Just Feed You. Quality shouldn't be a luxury. Try Quince today. 
If y'all have been listening for a while, you know that both of our families love pickles, like big time. So of course, we jumped at the chance to work with Grillo's Pickles, and oh boy, have we made everyone happy. (laughs) Grillo's is going to make you happy too. We've been fans since long before they became a sponsor, and we're telling you, these are the best pickles we've ever had. In fact, they are perfect for packing in your kid's lunchbox, make a fantastic healthy after-school snack, and they're my favorite way to top my famous fried chicken sandwich. Made with a 100-year-old secret family recipe, Grillo's uses only all-natural, high-quality, garden-fresh ingredients to deliver crunchy, tangy flavor with zero artificial preservatives or colors. And all of their pickle varieties are made cold, shipped cold, and sold cold, which gives their products a distinct crunch and bold flavor. Grillo's pickles come in original dill, hot, and bread and butter flavors, and a cut for every occasion with holes, spears, halves, chips, and thin sliced sandwich makers. And their latest product, Pickle de Gallo, is a pickle based salsa that's amazing on a chip or as a topping for burgers and dogs. We are completely obsessed with this stuff. No, seriously obsessed. <laughs> All you have to do to get your hands on this goodness is head to the refrigerated section of your local supermarket, including Whole Foods, Target, Kroger, Safeway, and Publix. Go to grillos.com backslash D-I-J-F-Y to grab your exclusive coupon for $1.50 off your Grillos purchase. That's about 25% off most of their products. And also find a store locator. All right, Megan, I want you to talk about dinner sandwiches because you joked about the muffalata. And honestly, like, that's all I have to say about it dinner is, sandwiches. Like the most perfect <laughs> I love also, though, what, when we were talking about bagels, what you said about ratios. And I feel in some ways this is going to be very revealing of, like, if you say lunchbox sandwich, I think square piece of whole wheat bread and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, to do it, even though we've discussed there's, like, plethora of bread, right? Yeah. If you say dinner sandwich, then my mind like is expanded. Yes. I'm thinking about brioche rolls. Yes. I'm thinking about pita pockets with like yes. cur- like chicken curry and chickpeas and stuff in it. Um, but I think that the thing is that it's like I think about a different ratio of bread to fillings for dinner time because I think the objective with dinner sandwiches is sort of the idea that you're like getting it all in. You yes. are getting yes. the protein. You yeah. are getting some veggies and then you're also having the the opportunity for like some real satisfying flavor elements. Totally mm-hmm. agree with you. So that is a big difference. I don't know. I don't think that there's anything we talked about as far as like a lunchbox sandwich that also couldn't be a dinner sandwich. Mm-hmm. But I also think there are things that you can serve for dinner and eat for dinner that you c- wouldn't be do as well as a lunchbox sandwich. For example, like breakfast sandwiches. Like cooking a fried egg yes. and making like on a roll with like a little sa- like a little green salad and some crispy prosciutto. Like I wouldn't pack that in a lunchbox, but I would enjoy the hell out of that. Well, it's funny that dinner. you say that because I see where you're coming from and I agree. But I have to say, especially now that the boys are older, I actually have cooked scrambled egg sandwiches for lunch, <laughs> like for oh, lunchbox. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I've done scrambled eggs with pesto. Okay. We didn't do a fried egg. That'll get destroyed right. and yolk will be everywhere. But uh, pesto scrambled eggs and put that in a sandwich for lunch. And they love it, like on a roll. This summer, I traveled to Greece. And one of the recipes that I brought back, that's so funny because my mom was like, I used to make that. And I kind of had like a flash, but this wasn't something that ever became like a normal part of what we ate at home. Greeks will take in-season tomatoes. So it's perfect to do right now. And you cut the bottom just a little bit to reveal the flesh inside. So you're just basically taking a flap of the skin off. And then you're grating that. Guess what you're using? A box <laughs> you're using grater. a box grater. You just like called me out and tagged me. Yeah, because I was like, oh, here we go for vegetables. You grate <laughs> it and you basically make a fresh pulp. Like the more you grate yes. it, you're just left with the whole skin. You cook that in olive oil until it becomes thick, and then you just scramble two eggs. You throw two eggs in there and scramble it, and you can throw in little pieces of feta cheese. So you get some tomato, you get some egg, protein, you get some cheese, protein, creaminess, and that's it. And you just eat it like that with like pita on the side. But I was thinking that would make a crazy sandwich, delicious for lunch or dinner. Okay. I think though it has to do with the age of my kids too, partly. Like I think older kids want like a heartier... You know what I mean? Like lunch, 
becomes a little bit more like dinner for some kids, yeah. like depending on their I, appetite and size. Is it is it terrible that I'm like kids have zero taste, so I'm not going to cater dinner <laughs> to what I want. Yes, and I'm thinking about things like that sort of classic Italian. Like I think of it as a beach sandwich, but it's so good for dinner with the little like shredded lettuce and tomato on like a hoagie roll. I'm thinking about grillable cheeses like halloumi, mozzarella. There is another cheese that's like highly grillable. And for some reason, I think it's like Basque and I cannot think of the name of it. But it's also making me think of a thread that came up recently in our listeners group. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Mm -hmm. the one with the grilled vegetables. Yes. Okay, can you say? Yeah, so this is Amy Roosh. I totally remember this because I was like, oh, I'm putting that on my meal plan stat. She talked about one of her favorite summer dishes. Okay, here's what Amy says. We make grilled vegetable sandwiches on ciabatta bread with provolone or mozzarella cheese and pesto. You can use any summer vegetables you have on hand, but we usually use peppers, zucchini squash, purple onions, plank carrots, etc. Here's the good part. I baste the vegetables in an herb butter. Yes. <laughs> then you just toast the bread and make the sandwich and allow the cheese to melt. Ah. Yes. That, that is 100 percent that is dinner i would want to eat for dinner and here's the here is what i think is the magic of that too if you have selective eaters or less adventurous eaters like there is something there for everyone and it can just be like bread and cheese and carrot sticks like you didn't do and really a lot of extra work to just cut up some carrots and peppers and not grill them and yet everyone's like fully satisfied with the sandwich dinner yes and that also feels like something, and this is the, true of the muffalata, of the like Italian sub, something that you could make a big batch of them, stick them in the fridge, and then everyone can eat them as they come home in shifts after work, after practice, after, I don't know, glee club. What are the kids into? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. After glee club. I don't know. I kind of wished I was in glee club. I don't think we have one. But yes, theater yes. practice. Play, yes, practice. whatever it is. I want to talk about using your freezer. So we have a couple of episodes on how to stock your freezer. Like people love Trader Joe's. People love Costco. There are so many great shortcut things that you can put into a sandwich. So meatballs. Meatballs, meatloaf. meatloaf. You're thinking of like things that are already cooked in the freezer and you can basically just reheat them. Yes. And then yes. put it between bread and it's satisfying. You can add pepperoncino. Again, for that crunch in that tang, you can add like extra fresh vegetables. You can maybe do a spread or a tomato sauce, but like the protein just comes straight from the freezer or the prepared food aisle. Yes. I know people love Trader Joe's. Like they have like a chicken lime jalapeno burger, which as a burger aficionado, I don't feel like that qualifies as a burger, but it would make excellent sandwich fodder. And I would just like buy a bag of prepared slaw from Trader Joe's also, and then like rolls and do like rolls, chicken burgers, slaw. I mean, we did a reel recently on how to grab a rotisserie chicken and turn it into dinner. And sandwiches were part of that as well. It was kind of like a riff on a bami with pickled veggies and like a spicy sriracha mayo and then just like the pulled chicken. Oh, and didn't you used to talk a lot on the podcast about a cauliflower bami? Did I make that up? Oh, yeah. That's actually great for the season because you grill the veggie. There's grilled veggies and pickled veggies. And then a really yummy sauce, which I'm like totally blanking on. Maybe it is a chipotle mayo kind of thing. We'll link to it. It's on the kitchen. And then that also makes me think of, I have a wildly popular, which is a riff from a sandwich shop in New York, like a broccoli sub. Oh, yes. And you roast the broccoli with like a lot of garlic. You do like sweet peppers, like sweet jarred kind of pickly peppers, and then feta cheese and kind of like broil it all. But my kids love broccoli. But all the other elements are like things that I would be like, oh, my kids will not eat that. But you put them on a sandwich all together and they devour them. It is the wildest thing. And it's a combination where you're like, that doesn't quite make sense. But then when you eat it, you're like, actually, it makes sense. That sounds so delicious to me. And I want to, for social media, although I will probably not get permission, (laughs) record Isaac's face if I served him a broccoli sandwich for dinner. (laughs) I don't think he'll approve of being recorded in that way, but it'd we be will hilarious. Feed me media <laughs> Yes. 
I may try it because, you know, money talks. Really. He doesn't, money that does is. talk. That's true, especially to him. But he doesn't like meatless meals, A. And B, like all of a sudden, after eating broccoli for so many years, it's like he doesn't want to eat broccoli. Yeah. Ever again. That's kind of fair. Is it? It's broccoli. I don't know. I don't broccoli know. I feel like that about pizza right after our move because so many people like brought us pizza or we like ordered pizza when we were in the middle of our moving and like on our trip and stuff. And for most of the summer, anytime someone mentioned pizza, I was like, nah, I <laughs> that's that. crazy. That I is... know, but I'm back. And last night I was like, Ooh, I have a little pizza craving. Let's do that this week. Nice. <laughs> okay. So dinner sandwiches, making them hot, adding great proteins, right? Yes. Melty cheeses. Let's talk for a second about hearty salads because one of my favorite recipes from winter, winter chicken dinner is actually my chicken salad, which is so weird because it's like 50 different chicken recipes. And then it's like a chicken salad. That's one of my favorites, but it's, I just hit on, at least for me, the perfect combination of like creme fraiche and Dijon and the grapes. Like it's, again, it's really about the balance of those elements You've got crunch. Yes. You've got fat. It is so good. In there, you've got a little bit of tang. And talk about changing the bread. You know, serving that on sandwich bread, great for a lunchbox. Serving it on a croissant or some like hearty, delicious, warm baguette from the bakery totally makes it feel like dinner. Yes. I also love the idea of thinking about things that you serve for dinner, like a rotisserie chicken or, you know, grilled chicken. Yes. And how you can turn that into a sandwich. I'm thinking of like schnitzel. How, yeah. Like, did you, do you have like leftover schnitzel or do you want to like make schnit, schnitzel <laughs> and then do like a fennel? I can't even say it. I love it, but I can't even say it. And then make like a fennel apple salad to put on top of that and put it on like crusty bread. Yeah. Also, we haven't even talked about like tartines or other <gasps> open face yes. sandwiches, which are like basically cooked vegetables on top of bread and are so incredibly satisfying. Yeah. I mean, listen, I wouldn't say that this is the sandwich to make for back to school because I don't know that it saves you anything, but as a like point of inspiration, a crook monsieur, right? Yes. Where you're talking about delicious bread, bechamel, which again, like that's a trigger for thinking about like sauces and spreads differently. It doesn't have to be just like mayo, ketchup, mustard, like what kind of sauce do you love? I actually think that going back and listening to our episode about sauces would be a great idea if you're really inspired by this episode and you want to double down on your sandwich game, right? Because sauces equals spreads when it comes yes, to sandwiches. Right? Yes, right? Like bechamel, mm-hmm. that's a traditional French sauce for, you know, fancy cooking. But you put it on a piece of bread with some ham and melt gruyere on top and you have one of the great open face sandwiches of all great time. Great sandwiches of all yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> And then you see that and I'm triggered like, oh, it's um, croque monsieur or croque madame almost has an element of like French toast to it. So like, can you make French toast and turn that into savory sandwiches? Like for le- even leftover French toast, crisping it up again, like yeah. in a toaster or toaster Isn't oven. Isn't that a Monte and then Cristo? Putting ham. Yes. Is that what I'm thinking yeah. of? Yeah. And then putting like ham on it, ham and cheese and apple slices and serving it with like a little maple syrup and Dijon Ooh. vinaigrette thing to dip it in. Yes. Yeah. And topping with an egg because I mentioned croque monsieur, but the croque madame is with an egg, right? Yes. Another great protein that I think is really quick and maybe people don't like go to is smoked salmon. Mm. That's a really great for like nice crusty sliced bread with creme fraiche. And like, you know, smoked salmon and then put some dill and capers or sliced tomatoes. That also makes a really beautiful sandwich. You know, flaked salmon too, but the smoked salmon gives you another layer of flavor and a different texture. It's that because it's a little oily. So it's giving you silky and that smoky flavor. It's delicious. Also, just permission to do like a whole bagel spread. Yeah. Smoked salmon and cream cheese. There's a place in Chattanooga that we go to regularly and they do like a whipped feta instead of cream cheese and then smoked salmon and like red onion and arugula. And it's really delicious. Yep. I can't believe we haven't even talked about things like a sloppy joe. Oh, yeah. Which is also a sandwich, but like so much easier than making burgers and something you can either shortcut with like the canned sauce or like you can really easily riff on making a sauce from stuff that's in your pantry, like tomato paste and garlic and onion powder yeah. and 
you can turn a pound of ground meat into dinner for four yep. so easily and then serve it with like slaw or grill- the grillo's pickles are so good on the side. Oh, that's so good. And you can also save on your budget and do half a pound of ground beef and a can of lentils instead. Yes. That works really yes. good too. I've done lentil say you and beef. All veggie. Also, whatever happened to TVP? Textured vegetable protein. Oh. Do you remember when that had a minute? <laughs> what <laughs> did happen to TVP? <laughs> I think I was like in culinary school. So that means we're like talking about 2005, 2004, 2005. And you could buy it in the grocery store and you just like, it's, it's kind of like tempeh, but like it's cremulated, crumbled. crumbled. And you, it comes usually dry and then you like hydrate it and then cook it like ground beef. Whatever happened to TVP? <laughs> do you want to know? Do you want to? Kind of. I would do like if that, if I could just have that in my pantry and use it for the nights when we like have sloppy joes and like stretch ground meat a little bit. I would totally do that. I wonder, could you do that with um, tofu? Like meat, like either. Ooh, yeah. Kind of like, well, cause you can make, you can like, scramble. Scrambled tofu. Mm-hmm. So why couldn't you just like really finely mince tofu or grate it or grate like, it, freeze it? Because freezing it sort of change, it changes the texture. And while well, it's kind of semi frozen, grate it. And I think it would have great texture. Yeah. And or just take silken tofu and crumble it like it'll yeah. just crumble right under your fingers. Yeah. Something about talking about TVP and uh, Sabi Joe's made me think of like lamb and doing like lamb meatballs and making tzatziki and have sort of like a gyro, gyro, gyro. Say it, Stacey, gyro. Gyro. Gyro sandwich. Yeah. Could be so good. Yeah. I think what you're touching on there for me is that sandwiches are also great for stretching leftovers. So if you make a whole bunch of grilled meats, for example, or a big batch of meatballs and you only, you know, you have some left, but it's not quite enough to be the main protein, the main thing on the plate for everybody in your family, like chop it up and put it in a sandwich. In fact, it reminds me, we shared a recipe, I think, because when David Tamarkin came on to speak about intentional leftovers, the art of intentional leftovers, he talked about how he would use leftover meatballs. He'd make just a little bit extra and then slice them once they were cooked, like the next Mm. day and fry Mm -hmm. them in a pan so that they would get crispy all around and then treat that like you don't meat, you know? And yes, put it in we a sandwich. literally have a wrap sandwich. Yes. I, I wrote it. Yes. <laughs> like a wrap sandwich with meatballs. We will put that back on Instagram. And like a little Greek salad. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I feel like there's so much we haven't even touched on and yet we're like approaching an hour yes. of recording. So we this is the time where we have to like, Hit up our listeners group always for even more sandwich ideas. So join that community by visiting didn't I just feed you.com backslash community. We offer a listeners group and there's also a supporting membership that comes with hella perks, including two exclusive mini episodes every month, live events, which hey are happening this week. This is like a time to join because Stacy's gonna be here when this episode airs, and we are gonna be live and drinking paper planes. There's also lifetime access to a private Instagram feed. And we have that huge back to school giveaway we mentioned at the top of the show worth over $600. And it's stuff that's going to make your back to school year even easier and more fun. And hey guys, you can also find us on Instagram as at didn't I just feed you. You can subscribe to our newsletter from there or from our site. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you get your podcasts so that you don't miss an episode. A huge thank you, as always, to our editors, Samantha Gatsik. I'm Megan. And I'm Stacy. Stay sane and well-fed until next week. Hey, Oliver. Yep. What's your favorite cheese? Pepper Jack. Oh, no, no, no. Mozzarella. Yeah, mozzarella.